So today at the bakery, we needed to run our soft serve machine. Now that summer's over, we're not running it on a consistent basis. We just run it when we need to fill pints for our front freezer for grab and goes. So today we're doing that and I thought while we're running tubs, we can also show you how we make choco tacos and how you can also make them at home without using any special equipment. The waffle cone recipe we're gonna show you here is gluten-free, dairy-free. It's not vegan. We tried to veganize it, but our many attempts kept failing. So we'll keep trying and we'll post that if we make any headway, but you can also make this keto and low carb if you swap with the maple syrup. And then you can customize it by picking whatever version of ice cream suits you best. Or because you're making it at home, you can mix this up and use all kinds of fun flavors and toppings. So for our waffle cone batter, we're just gonna mix everything together in one bowl and whisk it with, we've got two thirds of a cup of almond flour, a pinch of sea salt. We've already added two eggs, two tablespoons maple syrup or your substitute, two tablespoons coconut oil and one teaspoon of vanilla. We're gonna whisk it until it's nice and smooth. And then we're gonna get our equipment preheating. Since the ice cream taco was a new product at our bakery this summer, we wanted to try it out before investing in an industrial waffle cone machine. So I actually just picked up this cute little machine off Amazon. I wanna say it was like $35. So if you wanna pick one up, go ahead, but you do not have to. We're gonna show you how to do it on this crepe maker, but you could also do it in a frying pan at home. I just don't have a frying pan here. So we're gonna do this on this flat crepe maker. For the waffle cone maker, I like to set it on high. And for the crepe maker or your skillet, I would set it to a medium heat because it's not being pressed on both sides. You're going to cook it for two minutes and then flip it and then two minutes on the other side. Whereas with the waffle cone machine, you're just gonna do a two minute timer and then it's done. So you're gonna take one scoop of your waffle cone batter and you're going to put it on your crepe maker and spread it out very carefully. We've already sprayed it with a nonstick spray and if you're too rough here, it will actually pull it off of your skillet or your crepe maker. So you have to be very gentle pressing it out. This is where the waffle cone machine comes in handy. We've played around with lots of different sizes, amounts, and we've kind of settled on the red cookie scoop, also known as the size 24 disher. Uh, it holds one and a third ounces, but you can also just use a tablespoon and it'll make cute little personal size tacos. I find the ones that we make are more of a two serving size. So it's been two minutes. So the one in our waffle cone machine is done. I pulled the one off the skillet thinking it would be done, but this is where we decided that it actually needs two minutes on each side. See how it's much lighter in color and it's much floppier. Whereas you'll see the one that comes out of the waffle cone machine is a more golden color and will hold its shape better. Maybe be very careful because your equipment is very hot. So use a spatula to get it off and then you have to shape it really quick before it cools. This is where we use the muffin tin hack. You flip it upside down and it will hold your waffle cone tacos in the perfect shape. And we are going to now pop these in the freezer and it's gonna get them to set up. And then just keep going until you've used up all your batter. This batch size for us with that red disher made five tacos in total you'll see later that i only have four tacos because shortly after this when i was pulling it out of the freezer freezer door bumped my arm and i dropped them on the floor so i had to make another batch and then i was a little rough with the spatula on the skillet one and so i had to throw that one away we ended up with four but here we go we've got our taco shells they've been set in the freezer see how they hold their shape nicely and then we use our soft serve machine to fill it with our vegan vanilla ice cream now it doesn't look white we use natural sugars so this is sweetened with organic maple syrup and organic coconut sugar 
But anyway, you're gonna smooth it out and then this is gonna pop back in the freezer till your ice cream is set. And for your at-home version, you can grab your favorite ice cream. We're using So Delicious Coconut Vanilla. I also absolutely love Coconut Bliss, but our Cosmic Bliss is the new name, but I have not been able to find it anywhere. So please let me know if you know where to find it because that one is my all-time favorite but it seems that they may have pulled out of Canada. So you're gonna take your ice cream, you're gonna let it sit on the counter for 10, 15 minutes so it softens and it's nice and easy to scoop and to shape. And then you're just going to fill your taco shell full of your ice cream. You could also use one of our no churn recipes. We'll link them all down in the description if you wanna make your own ice cream. But to make it as easy as possible, we're just using some store-bought and you're gonna smooth it out as best you can. This doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna coat it in chocolate anyways and pop that one in the freezer. And then just check on it once in a while to see when your ice cream is firm enough to dip in chocolate. It depends on how soft you let your ice cream get before you scooped it, but it could be as quick as 15, 20 minutes. So in the meantime, let's get our chocolate dip ready. At our bakery, we make all our chocolate from scratch. We have organic cocoa paste, organic cocoa butter, organic natural cocoa powder, and organic maple syrup, as well as organic coconut oil. And that's what we use to make our chocolate dip. We also use it as our chocolate drip on our cakes. It's very similar in behavior to Magic Shell. So what you can do at home to have something that behaves similar is to just take some chocolate chips and we're gonna melt them and add a little bit of coconut oil. You can link to our magic shell recipe too if you wanna do that instead. But chocolate chips and coconut oil will do the same thing. Next, we're gonna wanna prep our toppings. We're going with nuts here. I've got some pecans chopped and ready for some of the other tacos as well as some hazelnuts here. We're a peanut-free facility, so we can't go with the traditional crushed peanut topping. Now for the fun part, we're gonna dip our tacos in the chocolate and we're gonna seal all the way around so that you don't see any more ice cream. If you do, sometimes you get an air bubble that pops and then you can just go in and re-dip it to get more chocolate coverage. And then while the chocolate is still shiny and wet, we're gonna sprinkle our toppings, your nuts or sprinkles, whatever you like. We're just going to repeat the process until we've got all our tacos dipped and then we're going to pop them back in the freezer until set. Here is our homemade version. Totally awesome. I love how it turned out. It looks a little more home style, but I assure you it is equally delicious. And it's super fun if you make these at home because you can totally customize your ice cream flavor as well as your toppings. This one's getting crushed hazelnuts. How awesome does that look? We're gonna get them over to the freezer to get that chocolate to set up. The easiest way to tell that it's set up is that it's gone from shiny to dull. And that means you're good to go. So let's give this a taste. Oh, I wasn't zoomed out enough, but you get the gist. Look at that taco. It's so amazing. It was absolutely delicious. I'm gonna go in for a second bite. And it wasn't that hard for you to make at home. So give it a try and let me know what combos you make. We'll put the recipe and all the links and step-by-step -step instructions down below in the description for you. Enjoy!